Next, we're going to talk about the Poisson distribution. So we are going to have to use uh, a function in the calculator that you may or may not have ever used uh, much in your life. Uh, we do have to use our exponential function. I know if you've taken college algebra that you understand what the exponential function is, e to the x. So we are going to have to use that button in our calculator. All right. So we'll practice a little bit with that. So what is a uh, Poisson distribution? Well, just like with uh, the binomial distribution, we have certain um, properties or conditions that your distribution must follow, okay? Um, in some ways, it is similar to the binomial distribution. You must have uh, a number of random variables that you can count, and there has to be a total number of successes, just like with the binomial distribution. So um, if you look in the PowerPoint on this section, you'll see uh, successes occur one at a time. Um, so, you know, just like if we were rolling a die, we could roll a die as many times as we want, but we can't get, we can't roll a die once and get a five twice, right? You can only get a five once every time, or a six once every time, or a number once every time. So, you do have successes that occur one at a time. All right, the main difference, the very, the main difference is we're going to be looking at situations where we don't have a countable total number of successes because we're going to be looking at things like time. Um, so... Occurrences of a success in any interval is independent of the occurrence of a success in any other interval. Is what the way that your uh, your textbook puts this. Um, but you can just say the Poisson does not have a fixed number of trials. So the way that your, your uh, PowerPoint points that, it says the occurrence of a success in any time interval is independent of the occurrence of a success in any other time interval. So let me explain to you the situations we're going to be looking at here. So let's say that 
um, let's just say that I wanted to figure out the probability that uh, Zaxby's served 120 people within a one hour period. Okay. Well, I could then maybe look at the probability that it served 125 or the probability that it observed 75 or the probability that it observed 2,000 in one hour. Now is that going to happen? Probably not. But the probability that it served 200 in one hour, that's, that's probably a pretty good chance. But what do you think the probability that that particular restaurant served 15 million people in one hour? I mean, that's very, that's not going to happen. It's unlikely, right? I mean, how could that even happen? But there's not a fixed number of trials, okay? So that's the, that's the big thing. Even though there's not a fixed number of trials, there gets to a point where it would just be so crazy that it wouldn't make any sense. Like if you just try to put it in, in a real world situation. So the Poisson distribution, it uses a fixed interval of time in which the successes are recorded. All right, and again, uh, you know, if I wanted to know the probability that uh, within one hour I could flip a coin and get 250 heads, that might happen. If I flip fast enough in an hour, but the probability that I can flip a coin for one hour and get five million heads, that's not going to be very, you know, it, it's, it's not going to happen. But I could still try to figure it out. It would just be a probability that would be super close to zero, so close that it would probably be zero, okay? So that's the, that's the biggest deal. So there's not any limit, theoretically, there's not any limit on the number of trials, but a large number of trials is not very likely. All right. So I'm gonna write down the formula don't want you to freak out on me or anything. It's, it's just a little different, different variables, but it's not too bad. All right, so the probability that we get some fixed value of x, some x out of, out of some total number of trials is equal to e to the negative lambda power, just another variable, it's kind of like an upside down y, it's lambda, all right, times lambda to the x power divided by x factorial. Now remember the number of trials that x can be, I mean, it could be none, it could be one, it could be two, it could be three, and it could go on forever. But large numbers of X are probably not going to happen unless it's a large amount of time that we're looking at. So what is E? Well, we know from algebra that E is a transcendental number. It's kind of like pi. It's a symbol that stands for a number that occurs a lot in nature. All right? And it is approximately 2.71828, and it just keeps going on and on and doesn't create a pattern. If you ever want to carry it out to more digits, and we're going to use the calculator to carry out more digits for us, but we never want to just plug in a rounded value of E. But if we wanted to find out E to a couple more places, we could just say E to the first power and you can see it's kind of like pi, it just keeps going on and on forever and it happens a lot in nature and in mathematics, in physics. Okay. Alright, lambda, 
the upside down Y I was telling you about. That is the mean number of successes. If you're wondering how I'm saying this word, that's L-A-M-B-D-A. There is an uppercase and a lowercase, so this isn't the one you're used to. It's probably because this is, uh, I believe this is the lowercase lambda. Um, one Fun fact about lambda and or about Poisson distributions is that the mean equals lambda and the variance equals lambda. Um, there, there is a function in the TI calculators for, lamb for the Poisson distributions. The way that you have to put it in, though, is, is a little different. There, there is a uh, technology section in your book, in this section, that shows you exactly how to enter it in. Um, this is one, though, to me, that's not too bad, so I usually don't even use technology to do this, even though the variables look a little, a little different. There's a way to do it in Excel. There's a way to do it in, uh, in the TI calculators, but again, I usually don't uh, do that very often. So as your um, X values get larger, sometimes your probability ramps up and then goes back down. Sometimes your probability starts high and then goes down. Um, there are a couple of examples of what uh, the Poisson distribution would look like with different values of lambda. I'll show you a couple of those real quick. So here is um, what the distribution would look like graphed if lambda was 0.3. Even though you can't tell, these are values here. This is so, when you get to 5, it's so close to 0, even though it says 0, 0, you could carry it on out and it would eventually be a number. But it's so close to 0 that it's practically 0. Um, But as the values of lambda change, of course, the distribution's going to look a little different. So here's another um, Poisson distribution where lambda's equal to 3. Remember, lambda is a mean. So um, you know, of course, we're going to have to know what x we're looking at, and then as lambda equals 3, you can see it goes up, and then it goes back down. So you can tell that looks a little more um, bell-shaped, but it has a little skewness there. It is uh, skewed a little bit. Which way? To the right? To the left, it's one or the other. Now, as lambda gets larger, check out what happens. Here's where lambda is 12. So, as lambda becomes very large, you can see that we do start to have a bell-shaped distribution or a normal distribution. 
which may not mean much now, but eventually it will mean a little more. All right, so let's look at an example of how we could use a Poisson distribution to figure out a probability. It's actually kind of neat because it's the kind of problems that if you were owning a business and you could figure out maybe the mean number of items that you're going to sell at your business, then you could figure out the probability that say you're going to sell 10 items an hour or 20 items an hour. Of course you would need to have data built up over time that you could use. Alright, so here is a very good example. This is something that has affected I'm sure all of us at one time or another. How frustrating is it to go to the bank and need some money and of course you're going to go through the ATM because you don't want to go in the bank and then the line is out to the road. If you go to I know a particular bank in town that doesn't have a lot of access to its bank. There's only one of those. And many times I've tried to go to the ATM and the line be out to the road and I really have nowhere to go so I have to make another loop and hope that you know it speeds up a little bit. So here's a problem about a bank um, automatic teller machine. I really wish that there was an easier way to get money out, but I guess if it was too easy, then people might would just steal it. So, um, Suppose a bank has one automatic teller machine. Customers arrive at the machine at a rate of 20 per hour, according to a Poisson pattern. All right, so here's what we're going to do. First, we're going to figure out what is the probability that no one will arrive in a 15 minute interval. So x is going to be equal to if no one arrives what will x be equal to? 0. Okay. So it's going to be the number of people that arrive in the 15 minute period or interval. Now we know that on average 20 arrive per hour. So on average, how many arrive in that same period of time, this 15 minute interval? We're going to have to use some common sense. So if on average 20 people arrive in an hour, how many 15 minute intervals are in an hour? Four. So does that mean 60 people arrive every 15 minutes? No, that wouldn't make sense, would it? So you have to divide by four. So if we know 20 arrive in an hour, then on average, five will arrive every 15 minutes. So my lambda is 5. Okay, so let's use our formula and figure out the probability. So the probability that zero people will arrive in a 15 minute interval if normally on average 20 arrive per hour, that's going to be, let's use our formula, e to the negative alpha, so it's negative 5 times alpha, what was that? 
not, not alpha. I said I meant lambda. Where is alpha coming from? Lambda. So it's e to the negative five times lambda, which is five to what power? The zero, because we let x equal zero, and that's divided by zero factorial. Remember, zero factorial in mathematics is defined as one. So that's okay. It's not dividing by zero. So five to the zero power is what? One. So all we have to do is type in e to the negative five, and that will give us our probability. So I think in the most scientific calculators, you have to push in the e first, and then it'll just put your parentheses there. In this, I have to put in 5, negative, and then push my E button. So 0 0.00674. I'll round to three places. 0, zero. Is that a very good chance? That's point. Seven. I'm sorry. Point. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Yep. Point six seven four. That's not even a one percent chance that's going to happen. All right. So a very very small chance that would happen. What do you think the probability that Zaxby's is going to serve zero people in a fifteen minute interval is? Probably a lot less than that. I would, I would hate to know, on average, how many people they serve in an hour. And I'm just using that example because that's a new restaurant or a new fast food place in Brookhaven. All right. So now, what is, let, let's see, here's another problem. Same situation. What is the probability that in a 15 minute period at least Three people will use the, the machine. Now there's one problem, there's, there's one, uh, I guess, problem with the problem, if that makes sense. Because we're not limited with the number of people that could come to the machine. Now, realistically, we are. You know, in a 15-minute period, 5,000 people can't use the, the automated teller machine, right? But at least three would mean the probability that x is greater than or equal to three. So that could mean the probability that x equals 3 plus the probability that x equals 4 plus the probability that x equals 5. Do you see where this is going and not going to work? Because that would just go on and on forever. But we can't work a problem to go on and on forever. All right. Now, what we can do, though, is we can use the what? Yeah, we can use the complement, can't we? We can say that the probability that x is greater than or equal to 3 is equal to the probability that x is, what's the opposite of greater than or equal to? Less than 3. Or actually, we have to say not just that, but 1 minus the probability that x is less than 3. Now, less than 3 does, there is another way to write less than 3, isn't there? 
Another way would be to write x is less than or equal to 2. I don't care which way you write it. It's just that if you write it this way, less than 3, you might be tempted to work out 3. But you don't work out the probability for 3. Okay? Less than or equal to 2 and less than 3, since all of these are whole number occurrences, they mean the same thing. Okay? So here's what we're going to do. We're going to say 1 minus the probability that x is equal to 2 plus the probability that x is equal to 1 plus the probability that x is equal to what? 0. Guess what? We already have that last part worked out. We did that one already. We have it right up there in part A. So we won't have to work it again. All right. So we want to find the probability that x is equal to 2. We're going to use our same formula. All right. So you remember our formula. I've got it here somewhere. And I'll copy it down just again, uh, again, so we can just look at it and it won't look so crazy. So there's our, there's our formula. All right, so we're going to have one minus, and then we're going to work it out for two. It's the same 15 minute interval. So it's going to be e to the negative 2 times what? Is that right? No. What's lambda? What if we figure out the mean was? 5. So it's e to the negative 5 times 5 to the what? 2 over what? 2 factorial. So that's our first part. And then plus e to the negative 5 times 5 to the 1, or first power, divided by 1 factorial. And we've already worked out this third part, but I'm going to write it down anyway. e to the negative 5 times 5 to the 0 divided by 0 factorial. All right, so let's type this in the calculator. And I'm going to carry each one out to about five decimal places. All right, so here's e to the negative fifth power. I got to say that times five squared is 25 divided by two factorial is one. So there's the probability that exactly two. And I said I was going to round it to about five places. So 0 0.08422. And then we're going to do the same thing for the probability of one. So that's e to the negative fifth power times 5 to the first divided by 1. That's 0 0.033. If I round that to 5 places, that's going to be 0 
six, nine. Plus, and we figured out the other one. No use in doing it again. Point zero zero six seven four. All right, so I need to add those three together and subtract them from one. Alright, so I'm going to say 1 minus that. So the way I can do that is just make it negative and add 1 to it. So, of course, this is a rounded answer, rounded to 5 places, but it's 0.87535. So what does this actually mean? That's the main thing is that we understand what we're doing and what it actually means. So I don't care, I just want the answer. Well, it makes a little more sense if we can think about it in a real world situation. All right, so the problem was, what is the probability that in a 15 minute period more than or at least three people will use the automated teller machines. That's three, four, five, six, seven, on and on forever. It's within a 15 minute period or interval and we know that on average 20 people use this thing every hour. Five use it every 15 minutes. So the probability that at least three use it is 0.87535 or about 87.5% chance that at least three people will use the teller machine within a 15 minute period. And that, that it, it should make sense too if 20 people use it per hour or about five every 15 minutes then the probability that at least three people are going to use it within 15 minutes should be pretty good. Pretty good chance. Well, about 88%, that's a pretty good chance. If it was an 88% chance of rain in tomorrow, I'd probably wear a raincoat. Right? May not happen, but it's a pretty good chance. All right, let's see if we can uh, read through one more problem. We may not have time to do every calculation, but I do want you to be able to, to figure out like the mean or the lambda for the problem because sometimes it's a little bit different. Like that one, we were given the mean for an hour was 20 people using it, and we had to use 15. Right, or we were looking at 15 minutes, so we had to say 20 divided by 4 and get 5. Well, let's look at this problem. You don't have to write this one down. Let's just look at it and see if we can figure out what our variables would be. All right. So it says this uh, telephone company considered buying a, a uh, optical cable. So it wants to buy some optical cable, cable from Optica Incorporated. So it says it wishes to replace approximately 100,000 feet of conventional cable with optical fiber. Since optical fiber is very difficult to repair, it is important that the number of optical cable defects are minimized. I mean, that makes sense. If you want to repair something, Whatever you're repairing it with, you want to make sure that it's good material. All right, so it says Optica claims that on average there is one defect per 200,000 feet of cable. What is the probability that the replaced cable will contain no defects? 
Okay. So if it tells us that it's going to replace a hundred thousand, then on average, how many defects would that be per one hundred thousand feet? If you have one per two hundred thousand, how many is that per one hundred thousand? That's right, it's just half, right? It's 0.5. So the mean for 200,000 is 1. So that means the mean for, it will be 100,000 divided by 200,000. Or just 0.5. All right, there are tables then we could use to figure out the probability uh, of replacing uh, the cable with no defects. Um, what would our X be right here if we didn't want to use a table? The reason why it would be hard to do this is probably because of the Let's see, we want, we want the, the number of defects to be zero, right? So, right, and then what we want? No defects. So what would that be? If I plug those in my formula, e to the negative I may say alpha, I mean lambda, sorry, so lambda, that's 0.5 times what? Lambda to the x power divided by x factorial. So that's what I need to plug in my calculator. That's one, that's one. So that's e to the negative 0.5 power. 0.5 negative e to that power. Round this to five places, 0 0.60653. So it's about a 60.6% chance, about a 60% chance that there will be no defects in the cable once it's put down. All right.